So we're going to look at snaps and pivots now. Um, sort of went over pivot a bit in the last one, but we'll go a bit more in depth in it now. And then snaps as well. Good snapping system in Blender. So snaps is up here, the shortcut is a shift tab. But holding down control is a modifier key. Uh, when you're in the middle of moving or scaling or rotating, that'll automatically knock this on so you can sort of dynamically turn it on or off. So I use that control key most of the time. I don't really turn it on and off here. And then uh, you just have your usual modes that you have in max. So increment the snap into the grid, vert, edge, face, volume. Absolute grid snap means that if um, if you're off the grid, um, it'll snap it'll snap onto the grid, snap back onto the grid, and then you can affect um, rotate and scale as well, or translate or move whichever. So I'm just gonna create. Um, this is weird when this happens. So um, get in the habit of doing it up here so that it goes down. But uh, that's beside the point that's why as well as i said in the last video i'm going to put more of these on, on the quick favorites i don't want to have too many on it because then it sort of defeats the purpose if you're digging through but um it's just much handier than, than having to go through this extra menu and if you've got a shaky hand like me and it goes off and then it just disappears so i'll just snap into an auto view here and shift a and i'll create a cube so let's say i want to move it up here to snap onto the grid because it's creating it where its origin is like we talked about in the last video so i'll press g z and now if i hold control it's going to snap up um, half the width of this cube which is a meter or 100 centimeters because our grid here is set to uh, one blender unit to one meter or 100 centimeters because i'm in centimeters rather than meters so i press g and then I can choose my axis, unlike in the other videos as well, where I can just hold down the middle mouse. And you can see that um, that elastic band there. Is, uh, I'm still holding down the mouse here, the middle middle mouse to snap. Without, it just saves you having to use those extra keys. Or you can just use the keys, depending on what you'd rather do. So I'll press G. Um, I'll choose Y then as my axis. And then I'll just hold, I'm holding control down now. And it's just snapping to the grid and then if i go into auto you can see here the grid space in here is um there's going to be 10 of these so it's 10 centimeters or 100 millimeters for each of these so i'm going to just press g and then i'll do it in screen space because we're locked to auto and then i can hold down control and snap to those grids for more precision to the uh, 100 millimeters or 10 centimeters grid so that's basically snapping in, in object mode and um, so if i press tab um, and then press one for verts and i'll select a vert and then i'm going to change this over to uh, verts so the hockey for that is, um, is full stop or period for our american friends but i have mine set to tilde so you can see tilde coming up in the bottom right corner with the screencast and now i'm going to set the pivot point to active element so that's the active element there because um, it's it's yellow so just to go over that quickly, if I select active element, it's an important concept in Blender. So say if I select all of these, and then whichever the last one was, I just shift, click, deselect it, and reselect it. And our pivot is set to um, active element, as you can see up here, active element. So now if I press R, it's going to start rotating, and you can see it's rotating from that active element. And then I'm just going to lock it to, we'll say X, I'll press X. Now it's locking to that to that um, active element. Similarly, if I uh, just select them all again and press R again, it's and that is it's very handy. Um, you can also scale. It's going to scale into that active element. Or let's say I'm, I'm right clicking now. I'm just going to bring it up so you can see where it is. 3D cursor, and then I'm going to switch this over to 3D cursor. Now with all these selected, and I press S, it's going to scale towards that 3D cursor, and I can still hold down control there, you can see it's snapping. And so, I'll center that to the origin, and if I move, let's say, I'll just move that, move that up, and 
let's say I want to um, flatten all these out. It's the same thing again if I grab all these and um, Max you can just flatten to your plane by um, X, Y and Z but in Blender you have to press S, Z and then zero and that's going to scale it to zero but you can see it's, it's scaled here to the, um, the 3D cursor because I just right click there to cancel because remember it's model so we're on 3D cursor here so if I change this to medium point do the same again S, Z, zero it's going to scale to that medium point so that's a fairly important thing to get used to when you're modeling um, especially for flattening things out like that there's also uh, loop tools here um, there's a flatten like made planer and max uh, loop tools are another add-on that are uh, natively in blender but disabled well it's an add-on that was added but it's disabled it's part of the install um, or the base package so yeah, we'll go into that probably loop tools in some of the modeling videos so that's um that's pretty much um how the, the pivot point works and then you can um, tr like the other ones here bound and box center like they're, they're fairly obvious uh, what they are but active element is one um, and 3d course so they're two of them that you wouldn't be used to from max so um fairly important and, and fairly useful all right so let's say for instance then i wanted to scale these down to here i could either press shift s and then bring up the um, the pivot point again set that to 3d cursor select these press s and then it's it's going to scale down or else i could select this one select all these select that one last that becomes the active element open the pivots change that to active element and then the same thing when i scale it's going to scale towards the active element so that's pretty much um, how pivot and cursor works um, in your sub object mode so when I first start um, you know just learning to model in, in blender I kept um, getting frustrated because I, I always had the 3d cursor hidden and then you know I'd, I'd grab something and I'd start press s and I'd start scaling it and um, we're on medium point there now are we uh, active element so because they're all selected there's no active element so they're all active I suppose so the same medium point but um, I kept finding that uh, you know that would be on 3d cursor and then I'd start scaling and it's going you know what's going on or the 3d cursor would be over here somewhere and it starts scaling and the yoke would be going all over the place then and uh, it was driving me mad but that's now that I've gotten used to it, it makes a lot of sense and it, it it is really good um, system for modeling, um, especially with some of that uh, scale and stuff for the active element and everything. Um, so just bear that in mind. Um, that's one of the things that caught me out. Um, I learned fairly quickly though and um, just messed around um, between the three of these. Uh, origin, pivot point and 3D courses I showed in the last video. Um, you know, just, uh, just mess around with them really. Um, and I'm gonna the next video will probably be I didn't get into this I'm gonna do selections sub object selections all the different ways to select things in the next video so I think that's enough um, for this video it's pretty straightforward um, you know with the pivot point and snapping so there's your menus and as I said you can activate um, scale and rotate as well for snap um, so vert snapping actually uh, um, that'll be a good one to do so you have active as well median center and closest and then you have these two that appear um, when you go into element mode so i'm going to turn off that one and let's say i wanted to snap that one down to here this is going to be like max's uh, constraint to axis so if i press g to start moving that and then z and now i can snap and it's going to snap to that one right click the same G G X and then let's say I want to snap to that one over there it's gonna to snap to that one so I'm just holding control there as you can see in the screencast and um, it works very very similar to um, to Max's constraint the axis so let's just say I want to um, uh, put that onto median edge and the same thing then G 
x and you can see here it's snapping you see that circle there it's, it's snapping onto the edge here right, so i just thought i'd give a little uh, example a clearer example than that a bit more practical than just that cube so um, we're on increment snapping here and uh, i'm just gonna select this tab in the edit mode three to go into face selection select that face control i to invert it and x to the leaf faces so then in two to go into edge mode snap into auto and then um, i'm just going to press e for extrude and you can see it extrudes freely then i'm going to press z and then i'm going to hold down control and then i'm going to snap to there i'm going to press e again x hold control snap to the grid and then control r brings up the um, it's almost like a mix between um, swift loop and connect so it can roll the wheel the mouse wheel then and then click left click and then it's going to be your it can move it and then i'm going to right click to cancel that to set them in the middle and then i'm just going to turn off the floor and control r again give that a few i don't do that because i didn't right click at the end so r wheel up click and then right click to set them there so let's say for instance and um, i wanted to select this edge loop here or even this edge loop and snap it out to out to this one so we'll just hold alt double click and then g to move x and then control and we can snap out there and even though we're set to increment that's on the grid there so i can right click um, so it works in that case but um, i can select vert here and we'll just say closest and turn off this align rotation to target um, it goes a bit strange uh, for just normal sort of regular snapping so we'll do that again g x and then hold control and you can snap there and you can also for edge slide just double g press g twice and it's going to just um, slide along that edge loop like edge constraints in max and then you can see i'm holding control and it's snapping along the along the grid there along those the smaller grid spaces so that's it's snapping along the um the 100 millimeter ones so I'll right click yeah, and then i'm going to set this it's on vert so we want to go into verts and then i'll just click and then g you can see here it can freely move as well so i don't have to always you know hold down x i can just freely move around here and it's fairly accurate you know i'm just holding control as the screencast will show you so yeah i just wanted to give that it's a bit of a a bit of a clear example like you could even um, double click here and then i can press uh, g and y and then hold control so that's pretty much how that works straightforward enough but just a few little things like the active element um, and how the 3d cursor affects it as well so just remember um, this menu here which is the same as this menu here all right then i hope that was useful cheers thanks good luck